bay leaves. Let me pour you on the bay leaves. Bay leaves, you take, if you, we got bay trees out there. If you ever have fresh bay, this is the one herb that makes a dramatic difference between dried and fresh. If you have fresh bay, and then you go back and try to use dried bay, as it says in the recipe, you will be through with bay leaves forever. Dried bay. You might as well go out here and get an oak leaf and do the same thing. There is no flavor in dried bay leaves. But out here we have some bay trees. And there's, there's, they use, almost every state has a bay tree. California Bay, everybody has a bay. There's only one bay that you eat. It's called Lar nobilis. It's known as Greek Bay or, or Sweet Bay. Uh, but it's Lar nobilis is its thing. That's all we do is Lar nobilis. So if you pick up bay, you say, oh, I have bay. I have, it's only one. So don't get it confused. Uh, and Because I've seen people sell bay leaves, and they were not Lar nobilis. And they might have been Lar oak tree because they were terrible. But the nice thing about bay is when you're growing bay, and bay, okay, bay is a perfect container pot. But I'll tell you what, those trees we have out there, there's some on the desk, they're about that big, or bushes, whichever direction you want to go with it. They cost maybe $6, $8, something like that. Is it 6 Okay. If you take that thing, I'm going to tell you how to finance your whole garden. I'll tell you how to finance your house if you, if you want to do this. You grow that bay in a pot as a topiary. You get it about this big with that ball up here on the top. That's about an $800 plant now. And the reason being, base grows so slowly that it takes a long time. Now, in our environment here, we can, bay is a perennial. But for us, if you take a bay tree and it gets down in the teens and the wind is blowing, it's dead. If it gets down in the teens and the wind is not blowing, it's okay. V reverse it. Let the wind blow, 32 degrees, no wind, blah, blah, blah. It's fine. It's the combination of teens and wind that kills the tree. So how do you handle that? Many people put it in a container. Now, I have yet to find any people over the last eight or nine years, ten, well, we had a herb business last 20 years, I think I can extend this out, that has ever been able to put it in a container and keep it alive past five or six years. I have not seen that happen. Now, these aren't people that have greenhouses either. But they're people that are just, what most people do is they put the bay inside the pot. They keep it outside basically March to December. And then come January, February, they pick it up and they put it in the garage or, or in the house. Yeah. And, yeah, and that's fine. If, yeah, and that'll do it. And that's just to avoid the teen win situation. We have four of them growing outside our house. All four of them are, one of them, one of them is right behind, there's our house, a row of bushes coming off of a pond, so we get wind, but not from that direction, it comes from that. There's a pond down here, here's the house, here's the bushes, we put it right behind the bushes. Now, it could use more sun, but it's protected back there. That one's probably five years old now. We have, it's all my ducks. <laughs> We have a, uh, I have another one that's put near our deck in a V-shape area, and the steps protect it too, and it's growing right there, so when you walk down our steps, you have a bay tree, but when we're cooking at night, where's my wife when we're cooking at night? When I'm cooking at night, <laughs> I do all the cooking. <laughs> it's nice to send the kids out and say, just grab a bay leaf. Now, point on bay leaf, what bay leaf do you grab? You grab the bay leaf that is the greenest. And the reason being, a light-colored bay leaf is... And you don't, okay, you don't fertilize herbs, period. People forget. Now, in a pot, it's, it's dependent upon you for nutritional matter. 
generally the best way to do is use some type of compost, some leaves or something like that. But you don't really have to do miracle Grow or any of that stuff. Herbs, out in the, people forget herbs are beneficial weeds. That's the history. So what ends up happening is they don't need a lot of care. You leave them alone and let them go, especially Mediterranean herbs. Now, one of the things that happens now is we have become more herb conscious and we end up getting herbs from all over the world now in this local area too. Question? Yeah, so if you're going to put it in a pot though, you know, um, <coughs> a pot like that, mm -hmm. we can use the like the miracle rose soil. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Right. Stuff in it though, right. Yeah, you can. You can use it. But then, yeah, if you're putting it in the ground, just regular old yeah, ground. Yeah, they, they're weeds exactly, and that's what we tell people. Like the onions that are growing up in your yard, most of these weeds were those things, and they just found out a way to use them. And and I mean, and that's because when you walk out with these little delicate things, I mean, your natural thing is you want to nurture them. You know, the worst thing you can ever do is do, a, do one bonsai or one topiary. That's probably the worst thing. You can, if you did 50, you'd probably keep them alive, all 50 of them. But if you do one, you're going to baby it to death. But any time, and what I was saying about the green on the leaves, what's happening with the green on the leaves on a bay tree is in order to grow, it's bringing up water. And that's why you have the lighter color of the bay leaf. When you bring more water into the leaf, you dilute the oil. So it doesn't smell or taste as well. So when you go to your bay tree, you reach down to the bottom leaves that are very dark. That's what you want to cook with. Now, if you bring that fresh bay, and this is where with dried bay, no comparison. You take that fresh bay leaf in, and say you're going to do a chicken breast. So you got the skin here, so you put your bay leaf in right here, and now you got the meat up against there. Now you turn it down. The reason you're turning it down is you want the leaf closest to the heat source. And what it's doing is the heat comes up, the oils leave. There's only one place to go, into the meat. And that's where the flavor comes through. Because I, I notice this with our bay trees. One of the nice things, I'll, I go out when I look too, especially if it's cold, because I don't want to go back out again. And I've, I've told my wife, if, I, if whatever I'm cooking with, if I can't see it, I don't use it. So we've had electric knife for years, and I'm out there chomping away. Why don't you use an electric knife? Well, I can't see it. That's why I don't do it. So when I go out on the bay tree, a lot of times I'll break off because you know, you're paying attention to what the tree looks like. You know, I mean, you won't. You, so I'll break off a whole branch off the bottom, and then I'll bring it in the house and just leave it in the house so I can see it. In it. But bay is also an insect repellent. People used to take bay leaves. And like you would throw them in your closet or somewhere, they as in, they have insect repellent properties. You can do that with rosemary too. Uh, we can go forever on the little tips, but that was the way it was used. But so people would, you know, and you could take a, a, a thing now in its natural habitat. It's a big old bush tree type thing. It's growing all over the place. You got limbs everywhere. You can just watch the way yours grows. It wants to go. That's where those bottom shoots are coming from. You know, that's the way to do it, but... Oh, my next class. All right. <laughs>